Want to see a smackdown between the MSI GT 73 VR and the ASUS G701 VI? Well, let's take a look. Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disown, and uh, today we're going to have a little bit of a smackdown, not a points based smackdown this time, but just a general overview of the ASUS G701 VI, which I uh, reviewed recently, and if you haven't seen that review, please uh, click up here, and the uh, MSI GT73 VR, um, which uh, is the sixth generation, and if you haven't seen that review, uh, please uh, click up here. Now, um, they're both equally spec, apart from the MSI has the i7-6820 um, HK CPU, and uh, the uh, ASUS has the i7-7820, HK. Now they do differ in prices now. Previous generations are often discounted compared to uh, the current generation. So for example, this is $3,000 and this you can get for around about $2,500, $2,600. So, you know, there's a bit of a, you know, a saving you could have on here. And I'm wondering, is it still worth buying an, a previous gen laptop? So that's one of my quests here to, to see if that is the case. Um, so taking a look at them, you know, down to personal preference, which one you prefer. I think aesthetically, the, the ASUS does look better. Um, you do have a, uh, a soft touch feel on the uh, next to the key on the keyboard here, and of course, uh, brushed aluminum chassis here, which is also evident on the on the lid here, which is brushed with uh, decals here, which light up, and it's a, a nice nice air vent. I, I quite like that. The um, MSI is a bit of a more of a boxy look again. It's, a, it's an aluminum uh, chassis and an aluminum lid. Again, with the decals lighting up. The front of the ASUS tapers, so it is considerably thinner than the uh, MSI. Here, the screens are both equally visible outdoors. The MSI is thicker at the back, but not by much. The MSI is slightly taller. That's not only where the differences are. If you look at the, uh, the keyboard, um, the keyboard on the ASUS just lights up red. You can't change that. Uh, you can uh, alter the, uh, the levels of intensity, say there's three steps. Whilst the uh, Steel Series keyboard on the uh, MSI can be configured in different zones of colors, uh, different brightnesses, different patterns, waves, pulsing, dancing to music. So there's, <laughs> there's a lot more to, to do there. You may not want that, but you know, it does do that. Um, also, what I like on uh, the MSI keyboard here, you do have some buttons on the right hand side, which um, allow you to uh, switch to integrated graphics, which is fantastic. That uh, allows it then to uh, go for battery life up to like four hours, 25 minutes on the uh, 75 watt hour battery. Um, so many laptops in this class can't do that because they both got G-Sync and they both don't allow Optimus. So to be able to switch to integrated graphics, I think is a, is a key thing on the uh, MSI. Um, other buttons uh, allow you to uh, go into uh, the Explit Gamecaster software, um, activate the turbo fan with the one touch button. I think that is great too. And uh, also to uh, as a button to alter the keyboard effects. So that, that is nice. Conversely, the ASUS has other functions. I mean, it's still very good. It's got uh, a button for the uh, Explit Gamecaster software like the MSI does. It's also got five macro buttons which you can program to uh, do uh, you know different things like internet calculator and uh, and so forth and you also have a button to open up the uh, the dragon i mean a dragon center the uh, gamer center software to which allows you to uh, look at you know various other functions and uh, the speeds and uh, and everything of the fans and control the fan speed in there now the msi doesn't have a button for the dragon center which i think is a shame that would be nice if they had that you have to you have to click on the icon um touch pads um, I do like how the MSI touchpad is uh, lit up around the, uh, the, the periphery there. Not sure you, can, you can see that there, how it's, uh, it's lit up. That is nice. Um, again, it, it's smooth and uh, the button, the mouse buttons are big, uh, but they're, they're louder to press, make more noise, and they take a more of a firmer press. And uh, although scrolling, two finger scrolling is, is fine on this, the uh, pinch to zoom is a little bit uh, not so good. It uses uh, synaptic uh, drivers. On the uh, ASUS here, there's no uh, no lighting up around the, 
the thing, which is a shame that would be, would be a nice touch. Um, but it certainly it is a, a better trackpad to use. Um, I mean, it's equally good for moving around the cursor and two finger scrolling, but pincer zoom, much better. The, uh, the mouse buttons are better too, not as stiff and not as loud. And this uses uh, Windows Precision drivers. Speakers are an important thing for a laptop. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, that's where this baby gets let down. The ASUS only has uh, four speakers in there and they're small. I suspect they're one and a half watts, don't produce much sound. In fact, in my tests, they seem to be louder at the back than they did at the front. It is still okay, but if you do activate the turbo fan, um, which is around about 53 decibels, and I think the, the speakers only generate around about uh, you know, high 60s, it's hard to hear the game. You've got to wear headphones. This, the speakers are much better, much louder. You can probably get by even with the turbo fan, although the turbo fan is a bit louder on this than uh, on the edge. By, you know, if it's, this is, 55 or so this is 58 59 you know so this is a little bit louder turbo fan uh, but the speakers are, are much louder you do have two three watt speakers in the front and uh, you've got a five watt uh, subwoofer in here now there's no subwoofer in the asus all this space and no subwoofer so i think you know that is a shame competing laptops uh, like the alienware 17r4 that has a subwoofer and that has excellent sound too so it's a missed opportunity here on the ASUS, I think, on the sound. Let's take a look inside the laptops. Gives us a good opportunity to compare size of the batteries. 75 watt hour on the MSI, 93 on the ASUS. The larger battery on the ASUS takes up much more space, which would otherwise be allocated to hard drive space, which you can see quite clearly here in the MSI, which uh, you take away the heatsink, you've got three SSD slots, and below it, a regular hard drive slot. You can see the one SSD on the ASUS, I suspect the second one is beneath the motherboard, so upgrading it would be more difficult. You will notice that the heat pipes are larger on the ASUS, but the MSI has uh, more of them. The MSI also has larger fans. The heat sinks on the ASUS are much smaller and vent out the back, whilst on uh, the MSI they are much bigger and vent out the back and the sides. Here is the 5 watt subwoofer and the uh, 3 watt uh, front speaker. Look at the difference in size between the ASUS and MSI speakers. I also wanted to show you the air intake vents. MSI has them all underneath, whilst uh, ASUS has some underneath, but also on the sides. I did a GPU test running uh, Furmark, and I kept everything on auto fan. It was interesting, the, the GPU was cooler on here. It was about 79 degrees Celsius uh, versus uh, 81 degrees Celsius on the, uh, on the MSI and the clock speed of the 1080 ran a little bit faster. I think it was 18.35 compared to 18.22 on the MSI. So this was running faster and cooler at auto settings, auto fan. So that was, that, that was, that was running Fermark, so that was pretty good. In fact, let's take a look to see how effective the turbo fan was on both laptops. The MSI is in pink and the ASUS in yellow. At the top, we have the GPU temperatures. So using the auto fan, the MSI was at 81 degrees and the ASUS at 77. That shows the ASUS auto fan is very effective and it's also very quiet. Turning on the turbo fan, the ASUS GPU dropped 10 degrees to 67 and the MSI dropped 22 degrees to 59. Now looking at the CPU temperatures, they are much higher on the ASUS, but bear in mind that's overclocked at 4.5 versus 4.1 on the MSI. The ASUS is 89 degrees at auto fan, reducing to 83 with the turbo whilst the MSI stays steady at 68. Now, looking at the, uh, the, 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 um, the ports-wise, um, it's all down to personal preference. The MSI has a total of five USB 3.0 ports, two of them here on the right-hand side, and an SD card reader and the Kensington lock. The ASUS has three USB 3.0 ports, with one of them here on the right, an HDMI port, a mini display port, a Thunderbolt port, a USB-C port, and a ethernet port there with the uh, speaker taking up the rear. Around the back, ASUS just has its power connector, whilst MSI also includes an HDMI port, mini display port, Thunderbolt port, and ethernet jack. On the left-hand side, MSI has three USB 3 ports and uh, its uh, audio connections. ASUS has its speaker, 
two USB 3 ports, its audio connections and a SD card reader. I do like how both have their audio connections out on the left hand side, keeping it out of the way of your mouse. Screens rise, and just looking at the screen, I think they're both equally as good, I do. This, the Asus is slightly brighter, but to be honest, I don't really notice it in day to day use. Um, perhaps outside in very bright light, you might notice that. And uh, color angles, you know, I think uh, the viewing angles are pretty good. And both of these, they're both TN panels. So you're gonna get perhaps a little bit of, uh, you know, color shift when you tilt them back. But they're both 120 hertz, both uh, as a TN, both full, full HD 1080p. So <clears throat> they both uh, work equally as well. And they're both excellent in gaming. Um, they both do exhibit a little bit of light bleed. Um, this more so around the edges and the uh, Asus uh, generally from the bottom. And uh, color accuracy, I think they're both pretty similar as well. You know, so I can't uh, fault uh, any of them. They're both pretty decent, uh, I think, for for work if you want to do some uh, photo editing or video editing, uh, they seem to be generally okay. Now I touched on on the battery. The battery on the Asus, you uh, get uh, like a three hours, 50 minutes, uh, just general browsing and uh, YouTube activity at 25% brightness. Um, this is substantially less if you don't switch to integrated graphics. I think it's around about, uh, you know, three hours, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, something like that. Because this has a, a 93 watt hour battery, this has a 75 watt hour battery. But switch to the integrated graphics, the ballpark changes there totally. And also what I like on the MSI, it has software to, to calibrate your battery. So every three months they recommend that you charge it up and let it drain using this software and it calibrates it, and then that uh, improves the battery life and keeps it going well. The Asus doesn't have that, and I don't think I've ever seen that in another laptop so far, so I think that's a, it's a good function. Now, power draw. I mean, these are, aren't exactly frugal uh, laptops, but also saying that at idle. I mean, they're very quiet at idle. I can't hear the fans at all. Um, they're both around about 34 watts or so, so that's pretty good. Start playing a game. <clears throat> the MSI is a little bit more power hungry. You're looking at uh, 274 watts on the MSI versus 259. But uh, start overclocking. Um, they're both around the same, about 286, 288 watts. But you've got to bear in mind, this overclocks, the Asus overclocks more. Uh, certainly on, on the CPU anyhow. So um, I think to keep that same type of power is, uh, is good. Very good for the Asus. Now performance wise, let's uh, take a look at the... Uh, the, the performance scores on uh, the games and also some uh, CPU scores. So with both laptops overclocked to the max, um, the MSI actually wins this one by about 11%. Still, both were well over 100 uh, FPS. And uh, I also record the, uh, the max uh, temperatures for the CPU and the GPU with the turbo fan activated. You can see that at the top. The faster CPU really helps the Asus win this one, pushing it to uh, 10 frames per second higher than the MSI. But look at the uh, CPU temperature, 20 degrees extra. Metro Last Light really stretches the GPU, so the effect of overclocking the CPU has little effect. It's pretty much a dead heat on this one. Grand Theft Auto 5 loves fast CPUs, and it's reflected here. Asus wins by 7%. The MSI still remains the coolest, though, even on the GPU. Not much in this one. MSI wins by 2%. The extra 400 megahertz on the CPU for Asus didn't do anything in their Rainbow Six Siege. A draw! Stepping up to 3440 by 1440, which should remove any CPU bottleneck, we do see the Asus taking a slight lead by 3%. The higher clock speed on the Asus gives a great score in times by 7270. Unfortunately, the i7-6820 cannot keep up. The i7-7820 in the Asus only wins by 3% here, which I was quite surprised at. I always thought Firestrike was more CPU dependent. Passmark tests CPU speed 
hard drive speed, memory speed, as well as GPU speed. So it's no surprise that Yasus wins here by 7%. That RAID 0 hard drive certainly does help, as does that extra 400 megahertz on the CPU. Cinebench R15 multi-threaded test loves fast CPU cores, and no surprise here, Yasus wins by 15%. Handbrake is also multi-threaded and loves fast CPU cores, but the difference here is it's a long test and the CPUs do get really hot. Even with the turbo fan going on both, temperatures are in the high 80s, close to 90s. The i7-820 in the ASUS tends to run around about 3700 MHz, and the i7-6820 in the MSI around about 3500 MHz. So nowhere near the uh, max overclock which I've applied, consequently the ASUS only wins by 3%. My final slide here looks at how much did the G701VI win by. Gaming averaged around about 2%. The victory was larger with applications requiring fast CPUs and fast hard drives. On average, the ASUS won by about 5%, yet it is 15% more expensive. So indeed, there is a case to buy yesterday's hardware at discounted prices. So if you look at the gaming performance in general, it's pretty close. I mean, even uh, when you crank it up to uh, 3440 by uh, 1440, it's close. That's uh, within 3%. And at 1080p, I measured 1%. So if you look at an average of 2% extra performance in gaming on the ASUS, <coughs> that's, uh, it's not that great. Now, start doing some more CPU tests. And I uh, say, you know, not just CPU tests, I suppose, like Cinebench, but, you know, just gen general activity, which requires more CPU work. This is going to start benefiting you much more. Um, if you start doing more uh, like rendering, video rendering, and so forth, um, like my handbrake test, they were very similar. And they all tend to sort of get down to their max uh, turbo frequencies, and there's not much to, to between them, just a, a percent or two. So, uh, but for gaming as well, yeah, that, there's actually not too much difference. So, this leads me to my, uh, my final conclusion, and really, um, on average, in all my tests, the ASUS was 5% quicker than the uh, MSI here. And, uh, you know, the difference in price is around about 15%. So I think, you know, if you're looking to get into a new laptop, now it might be worthwhile buying a next gen. Um, you certainly get similar performance and, uh, <clears throat> you know, for a bit, bit less money. But, of course, you know, it's always a trade-off, isn't it, really? You want to get the best uh, hardware for your money you can buy. Um, but you've got uh, is it Coffee Lake coming up uh, probably in, at the end of the year. This one will be outdated. And I, I believe that uh, processor will uh, give an extra 15% improvement over this. So who knows? That's the nature of uh, the computer business, I'm afraid. Anyway, I hope you found that uh, useful. Um, thumbs up if you like it and uh, subscribe if you feel so inclined. Thanks again for watching. Bye.